are you? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Hey, uh, I just have you on today, or is there anybody else joining us? No, it's just me. It's just me. The other two okay. guys, they are living in Romania. So I'm I'm in Germany. I live in Germany since 96. Okay. All right, that's awesome. Why it's just me. Hey, we're going to be good friends already, man. You got the the, uh, the Dawkins t-shirt on, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite band, man. That's been my favorite really? band since. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. That's really well, cool. <laughs> that's great. Hey, first thing I want to say is uh, is thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, to chat with me. Sure, man. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. That's really cool. I uh, this is the the first time I heard you guys. I got the uh, I got the tracks from Frontiers. Uh, mm -hmm. John Freeman sent them to me, and uh, I was blown away, man. I, I I love this kind of music, and uh, that's wow. it's a great album. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I'm really really happy to hear that. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, for your, you know, for your debut, I want to turn the volume up here. I apologize here. Sure. You know, you know the album, the album hits next Friday. So that's, that's coming up quick. I mean, you guys got to be, you know, really excited. We and, are excited. Yeah. And like I said, when I listened to it, I, I was extremely impressed. I mean, it's melodic, it's powerful, but, uh, you know, it has a, a ton of different elements in it. How did, how did this band come together? Give us some background on that. It's not actually a band. It's a side project because the other two guys and myself, we are, we are, we have other bands and, and projects. For example, Adrian is the singer and guitarist of Cargo, which is Romania's most beloved rock band. They are really huge in Romania. And Ovidio, our singer, has his solo career too. He's involved in other projects, but just a second. My sure. phone is muted. Okay. So we were friends, let's say that, and we thought, let's try something else, something different from our main bands or main projects. And yeah, that's how we started a couple of years ago, maybe. Actually, there were, I think we started three years ago, three or four, with the songwriting. And yeah, it, it grew, it grew. <laughs> the project grew by, by itself. So it was one of those things where you guys have been, you know, been writing it for a while. And then finally, it just because uh, I know a lot of that that comes to be with uh, with time restraints. I mean, with you know, you all in different bands and, you know, it's uh, that's just the way things happen. But it seems like, you know, you know, when it comes together, it's it's a great thing, though. huh? Yeah, a big plus was the fact that we we were already friends. So we, we knew each other. Okay, I have to say I didn't know Ovidio or singer personally, but I knew about his career. So I was his fan, so to say, and and he loved my my stuff, the stuff that I already did. See, that's really cool. When you when you uh you know the yeah, I know you heard the album you know and the, and the finished product and everything and and uh, how did you feel that it, how the album came out? You know, when you look back, uh, is it a uh, was it exactly what you wanted? Was it what you guys were looking for? Yes, I have to say it's exactly what we wanted. Um, you already listened to the album and you see there are different styles. Uh, we have a couple of songs that are really, I don't want to say greedy, but they have a, an edge to them. And a couple of songs are pretty melodic. We were bold enough to, to write two instrumentals. I know this is maybe not the usual stuff, because yeah, the bands they they write songs with vocals and but we we wanted to take a risk. I think you got, you guys did really well. I mean, it's a it's a good mix. It's a good it's a it's a good diverse album. I mean, I like listening to albums where you know you get to hear some changes. I mean, there's a there's yes. a lot of albums that I listen to. It's you know, know. it's kind of like uh, you know, but what was it like? Um, you know, I, I bring this up to a lot of bands, you know, that, that are on Frontiers because uh, Alessandro is involved in a lot of projects with the label. And I don't know what that is with that guy, but what's he like working with? I mean, he does, he's just, so many things that he does is just so good. And the, and the finished products are just amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I can't say it was easy because you have to know we mixed the album by the internet we, we didn't work one-on-one -on -one with him right it, it was at times it was tough it was tough it took a lot of time 
but he is extremely professional and he's very friendly and that's why the work with him was was such a blast he's such a great guy i think you already know him i actually i actually never i never met him or interviewed him but but i've uh you know i've chatted with some of the guys in frontiers on uh you know in some of the chats on facebook and things and and i just i hear nothing but good things about him from anybody i've ever interviewed so that's that's great to hear he's extremely friendly He's such a great guy. Maybe you should do an interview with with, with Alessandro too. <laughs> yeah, I gotta I gotta reach out to him. I yeah, yeah, yeah. To. You you really have to. You know, we discussed early. You know, like I said, I I really enjoy the album. I mean, I, I've been sending it to people. You know, let them listen to it. It's it's great to hear. You know, fresh you know fresh bands. You know, new new bands coming out or new projects coming out in this case, and. Uh, there's so many great songs on the album, like I said in the beginning. Um, Thank you so much. And the few that I got a few that stand out to me. I mean, I I write them down on the interview so I don't forget all the songs and everything. But uh, "Play to Lose," uh, "Nobody Moves," and and I think my favorite is "King of the Badlands." Really, the track on the album. I really like that song. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's really what I like about it is that you know the heavy guitar and and you know when it kicks in and it has the keys kind of mix in and it's it's kind of uh you know a little bit maybe a little bit dark and it, you know when it flows in but it's it's a really good song. When you guys when you guys go about writing a song, you know not even not even so much with this project but any of the projects you do, um, what do you start with? I mean, is it you start with like a melody or is it a a chorus that you build off of? How does it go into when you build a song? Um, the songs were mostly written by me and Adrian. All right, so King of the Badlands, I wrote that song almost all by myself. And then he came in and he changes the arrangements. He adds the keyboards, the drums. And yeah, I, I rely on his professionalism. Then he maybe he, he, he tell me, okay, Tony, this works in a way, but here you have to change this riff or let's try something else. So it, it's, yeah, it's, we work together very, very, very good, Adrian and myself. And yeah, you mentioned Nobody Moves and what was the other? Play to Lose. Yeah. Play to Lose. Play to Lose was written by Adrian 30 years ago in the wow. early 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had just a couple of riffs, and as I said, we worked together, and yeah, the song developed, it grew. <laughs> that is, that's 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 always great. I mean, I love the stories behind, you know, how the songs are written because, you know, when you're listening to the album, you know, and, and you hear the way the artist wrote it, and and the way you guys, you know, put things together. I mean, it's just it it, it just gives that personal feel to it, like you're more connected. So that's the reason I asked that question because, you know, you know, being a fan of this music for so long, you know, and, and enjoying what you guys do. I mean, it's it's really something that's, uh, you know, I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Um, every song which we wrote has its own story. Really, we don't come up with stuff. We don't write songs just to for them to be written. You know. It's not, uh, it's not uh, a process which I, 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 why can't I tell you? I don't want this to sound bad. We don't have an industrial process of writing, you know? Let's, so, you know what I'm saying. We don't write yeah, yeah, songs, yeah. come on, let's, we have a song, let's write the other and the other. No, we need, we need time. When we write songs, we also need time for them to, yeah, to, to match our expectations. And it's, uh, I mean, you could tell the songs, I mean, build on life experiences and, yes. you know, the things that you go through. And that's, yeah, that's yeah. always, that's always really cool to hear because that's where the best songs are written. This is what we, what we also feel for, for example, King, King of the Badlands. Um, I wrote the lyrics when I was driving from Las Vegas to Los Angeles through the, through the desert. Then it yeah. came to me, okay, <laughs> this looks like a really cool cowboy movie and I was pretty inspired it was a long drive and I had the time and so I wrote the, the lyrics to King of the Badlands 
It was that written on, on location. <laughs> That's that that's really cool. That's a that's a really a good story though, because that, that that is that's a really good song. I was uh I've I listened to the album a couple of times through and uh you know this morning again and and uh that's definitely one of the songs that stands out. That's one of the ones you you know, like you said, you're cruising across the desert. Yes, you uh you roll the windows down and, and a radio's on eleven. That's what that's meant for. Hair nation on serious exam. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Hey, give them a plug, and, and if you guys are listening, get this song on here. Thank you. <laughs> and, and a, you know, with the album, you know, we discussed, you know, how diverse it is. I mean, you have songs that are, you know, some heavy hitters. You have some, you know, mid-tempo things, you know, ballads. And, and that when I ask a lot of artists this because, you know, the, the ballad was really an essential part of an album back in the, in the day. And, uh, I've always loved the ballads, and I I, I think uh, you know in a lot of today's stuff, you just you don't hear that you don't hear that that passion and and things like that. When you guys, you know, how do you feel about that? I mean, do you feel it's it's an underappreciated uh, type of song nowadays? Yes, maybe for the mess let's say that, that way but we love ballads we love ballads and we love power ballads we 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 are huge fans of firehouse or mr big or as i said duck and i love the t-shirt right, right, right. <laughs> uh, dream 69 all also they, they they write beautiful ballads you know right yeah maybe it is underappreciated when we we wanted we desperately wanted a good ballad our ballad, you know, Ball and Chain, the fourth song on the on the record. And I didn't want to, to make a ballad with with too much electric guitar. And that's why we kept it acoustic. Even the solo is, is on acoustic guitar. Another great song, man. Good feel. It's a it's a good flow throughout the whole album. I mean, I I really uh, you know, as a listener, it's 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 enjoy. You know, something I enjoyed listening to when you could just put it in, sit back. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to skip tracks. And, you know, I, I think that's a great flow. I mean, I, I like what you guys did on this. I really thank do. You, thank you so much. This is exactly what I wanted to hear. And this is exactly what we wanted to do. <laughs> you guys nailed it. You guys nailed it. Believe me. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Let me ask you this. I mean, it's... It, you know they consider they have it written up in the in the in the write up that the the bands from Romania, but is is uh what's what is the scene like over in Romania? I mean, as far as hard rock and metal, because I ask that because you know, with uh you know the way the U.S. is right now, it it almost seems like uh you know like rock and roll is is gone. I mean, for the most part, at least in a mainstream anyway. What is it? What is it like over there and and some of the other countries that you're that you've gone to okay at first i will tell you how it is in romania in romania it's still in the underground like in the states we have a lot of rap artists and trap and whatever whatnot um they have to struggle that's the reality rock bands have to struggle um luckily for adrian his band is pretty well booked and he's always on tour even now he is his gun has he has to play some concerts but the most of them they have to struggle that's the the harsh reality Thank in germany you. the scene is a little bit better uh, the german scene was always i don't know alive Thank heavy you. metal rock uh, classic rock thrash metal you name it yeah it's, it's a pretty big and well organized scene in germany are you guys doing, you know, I know over here, we're just, I mean, we're opening up, but there's some places that still, you know, have the restrictions and things like that. Is, it, is there anything like that going on in Germany or are they kind of opening up now? Because of, of COVID. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly, yes, yes. I, I played like three or four concerts last year with my band here. And, and we lined up maybe another three or four for this year's we, we just don't know what's going to be next right it's so, yeah that's that's our huge problem the biggest problem we have 
it's tough because you really can't, you know, even bringing this album out. Like if you guys, you know, if this was a, a, a you know, a band that was going out on tour, yeah. you know, and you guys put out a record, I mean, it's so hard to, uh, you know, to promote it and, and be able to back it up. You know what I mean? To, to push it like you want to push it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I am. of course. At, at the, this moment, there are no no possibilities to book a tour. Maybe maybe a couple of concerts, but that's all. Yeah, yeah it's like that's, that here too. But it's reality. Yeah, yeah. We're hoping, hopefully, eventually, uh, you know, we come out of this. And and uh, that that on on that question, actually, a minute. Do you think that coming out of COVID? you know, in these last two years, and it's going on two and a half right now, actually. Mm -hmm. What do you feel it's going to be like, you know, for for the music scene? I mean, I, I think I'm starting to see that, you know, that the, the metal fans and the hard rock fans are really starting to unite again, kind of like it was back in the day. We're starting to see that that flow a little bit, especially with the younger guys, too. When when, when this comes out and, and you're able to hit the stages again, um, how do you feel that's going to be, you know, for the things that you're doing? I mean, I know you're, you have to be excited to have yeah. that opportunity again. You're probably just, you know, chomping at the bit to get out there. How do you feel that's going to be like when you come out? I don't want to sound pessimistic, but I really don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> um, but as you said, I hope the fans will support the artists. And that's what they did the, the whole time. They're buying CDs, they're buying vinyl, <laughs> and they're buying merchandise. So yeah, let's hope for the best. I really hope for the best. I really hope for the best. I hope so too for you guys. I mean, for everybody that does it, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a passion. You know that that that's why you guys do it. It's an art form. It needs to be appreciated, and and yeah. uh, it's uh, it's changed so many lives too. I mean, that's really what this music does. You know, not only for me, but I speak for a lot of people that, sure. you know, you could have the worst day in your life and, and, you know, you're able to connect with an artist. And that's that's why I give you guys, you know, high kudos for what you do. I mean, it's, it's very much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're, you're so nice. <laughs> yeah. That's really great. You know, that someone really appreciates and sees the way just like they are. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's you just, you know. Feedback. You give us this great feedback. This helps a lot. You guys deserve it, believe me. I hope the <laughs> album, you know, does fantastic for you. I wanted to bring up, uh, you know, the video for Drifters Union. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, because it's it, it's different. I mean, it's not one of those ones where you you see, uh, <laughs> you know, the guys are, are doing a performance video. And, and, and we see that a lot. But it looked like you guys were having a whole lot of fun. And, and with the song there, I, mean, I think it, it, it kind of, it gives a, a, a personal connection to the fans. I think that's pretty cool. What, what was it like about that with doing that video and how did that come about? <laughs> this is a very good question. Okay, let's start with, we are, our problem is I play guitars and bass. Adrian plays drums, keyboards, also a little bit of guitars and bass. He also sings the backing vocals. To make a performance video I don't know, it, it wouldn't be that great because should I switch between guitars and bass or again, should he jump up and down between drums and keyboards? So we thought, let's make, <laughs> let's make it different. Let's show the people first how beautiful Romania is. Because yeah, it was a pretty, pretty some pretty great uh, images. And we wanted to, to make, yeah, as I said, said something different to have lots of fun and just, you know, let's go out with the boys. Let's have a ball, have a blast. Let's drive some cars. This is the, the that's the whole idea behind our video. This was it. Let's make something different. Let's make something cool. Yeah. That's what we we thought. I don't. We we didn't know if it's gonna fit the today's today's um, 
all the, um, how should I put it? You know, the expectations. I, I, I feel the fans expect you to, to have a performance clip, a video. And that's what we wanted to do. We, 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 we wanted to make an action movie. Let's put it that way. Like a you. short action movie, like Fast and the Furious, <laughs> but in the Romanian woods. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I, I really thought it was a cool video. I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's refreshing to see something different. But I like the fact that you could see that you guys are, you know, friends with each other. I mean, you could see that there's a good bond there. And, and I think that comes across in the music, too. You don't have that friction, you know, that some bands have. It's just, uh, hey, let's get up there and play. Let's have fun. Let's, let's put out some cool music and, and, and let's really connect with the fans. And you guys have done it here. Thank you so much, John. That's really great to hear. What about, uh, you know, the albums out that are coming out next week um, and everybody that's listening, February 18th, you need to, you need to get this. I mean, it's a fantastic record. Um, but what's it like working with, uh, with, the, with Frontiers? I mean, I know it's Alessandro, but, but like the record label itself, because I, I, I run an indie record label. And when I started, my, my, uh, my blueprint was Frontiers. I mean, these guys, they're, they're, they're my favorite. I mean, I looked at what they're doing, how they do it, the professionalism, um, and everything that they do. What's it, what's it like working with those guys, and how do you feel about that label? It was always my secret wish to work with Frontiers. I never thought they are going to sign us because, as I said, we are a side project and we, yeah, are from Romania, let's say that. And I thought yeah, they, they never, ever, would, they would never give us a chance. But I was wrong, luckily. And they gave us first a lot of time. They didn't put us under pressure. Because the moment we, 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 we started to, to speak with them and to make some terms and they said, yeah, we are interested in you guys. We had only five, six songs. So we needed time to write the other songs. And they, as I said, they didn't put us under pressure and they were really, really great to us. Really great. We appreciated a lot. They had a lot of confidence in us they, they they trusted us that's really good to hear because it's it's uh you know you hear horror stories from some of the labels you know with pressure and and uh and how they do things but but that i think that's you know one of the things that kind of attracts the fans you know to what these guys do and that's why they have so many followers it's appreciated it's a professional organization for sure yeah i i, I really have to tell you this it was actually supposed to, we had to deliver the, the material last March, by the end of March, 2020. And sadly, um, one of Adrian's bandmates from Cargo died of COVID. Oh, so, sorry to hear that. Yeah, of course, it was a really, really tragedy. And they told us, guys, take as much time as you wish no pressure, take your time, guys. So this was, I, I have to say, really uh, uh, extraordinary. You, you really don't hear this from an organization, from, from, a, from a company, because they wanted, they want your material, come on, let's go fast, 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 <laughs> money, money, money. The cash has to go. But not in this case. They were really great to us. Not That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, when you go in and, and you're relaxed, and you're able to do what you need to do. It just, it brings out such a better product. You know, and it really is, is you know, what I hear out of this. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's something I'm going to be listening to for a long time. And I, you know, I really hope it's, uh, it's something that you guys, you know, maybe do album number two. Yeah. We would love to hear that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Tony, how about some of your... Uh, some of your influences. I mean, who, who are some of the guys that influence your playing? And, you know, I know Doc and, like you said, one of the bands 
obviously. I mean, who are some of the guys that, that influence you? Um, let me ask you a, a, a question. What do sure. you think? What do you think? Uh, who influenced me the most? Do you hear something when you listen to our, my style of playing solos or, or rhythm? What, what do you think? I hear I hear a lot of different influences, actually, which which I think is really cool. I mean, I hear, you know, like the Lynch side of it, yeah. obviously. I mean, you get that. But I also hear guys like, uh, you know, maybe a, a little Jakey Lee, maybe, uh, you know. You're, uh, good, man. <laughs> You're great. Sure. Yeah. He, Jakey Lee, John Sykes, for example. That was the yeah. next one I was going to say, too. You just brought it up, John Sykes. Uh, yeah. Who Murder. I love those guys. Dark and of course the European bands like Iron Maiden, of course. Maybe you don't hear it, but I really I learned a lot by by playing along to do those records. And of course the purple. But we, what you actually hear on this album is mostly Jackie Lee, uh, John Sykes, George Lynch, maybe a little bit of Inve. I love Chris Impelitari, if you know him, you, of oh, course, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. the band Impelitari, yeah. Those are my biggest influences, yeah. I think it's great to hear. I mean, it really is. I mean, just hearing those influences. And, and you brought up, you know, John Sykes. And I think, you know, John Sykes is the guy that really made those, you know, that, that White Snake self-titled album, what it was. I mean, it was huge. And I really don't think he got the credit he deserved on that. No, it was a, it was sad. He had to go, the way yeah, he he went. And of course, I love Sleep of the Tongue. I, I love it too. So because of Steve Vai and all right. the things he does, is great. And yeah, but the 1987 album is of course the biggest. I, how can I put it? Hard rock, melodic hard rock, hair metal. I don't know album. I think it's the biggest album ever made. And it was so heavy. It was so heavy. That's that's definitely what it was. Because it, it all the stuff that came out back then wasn't, you know, it was it was kind of like uh, I think of a good word for it. I'm not gonna not cookie cutter, but it everybody was doing like something a little on kind of like on the same lines. And then when that came out, that's almost like an album that you would think that that was produced today. I mean, you know what I mean? It has like that kind of sound. Sure, sure. It's, it still sounds great. It, yeah, it's to the test of time. I think it's cool. I mean, I think that's cool really to, uh, you know, to sit down and talk with you about this. I mean, you, you gave sure. us a lot of good insight, man. And, and uh, the album is fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, the release. And, and, and I hope you guys really, really get a lot of attention on this. You deserve Thank it, man. Thank you so much. That's what we hope too. I, I hope the people will enjoy our, our songs because they were all written from the heart. Yeah, it comes across very well, very well. How about, uh, how about any last words, Tony? I mean, you know, they only give us, uh, you know, 30 minutes on these interviews, but uh, believe me, man, I could talk to you for all day. It, it, you know, I just... <laughs> <laughs> How about any last words for the fans? I mean, the album comes out next next Friday. Is there anything you want to get out there? Hmm. As I said, I, I hope the people will give us a chance to listen to all of our songs, even the two instrumentals, because they're good too. I I, I love those two songs. And I hope I hope they, they keep listening to good stuff, not this fast food music, um, maybe, and, and yeah, and maybe uh, they are starting to listen more to newcomer bands, just like us. Frontier has a lot, of course, other, other labels have also a lot of, of great and interesting newcomer bands. This is what, what I wish, this is my wish. <laughs> I, I really wish the people will listen much often to, to uh, newcomer bands and to great rock bands. And also the, to the classic stuff, as I said. That's cool. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's what we hope too. I mean, we hope everybody listens in. Uh, 
Manic Sinners, King of the Badlands, next Friday, February 18th. Um, where will it be available at, Tony? I mean, I know Frontiers will have it on their site. Is there any, uh, any other specialty things that, uh, you know, places where it will be, a website, any any of that? On their, on their website, of course. In Germany, you have a lot of outlets. I know in the States, I, I think it's going to be, they are selling it on their website, but I know how the distribution in the, in the States is. I really don't know. I would love to 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 uh, see the album at Walmart or Best Buy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that. I will definitely be ordering my copy, so I know I know it'll probably be on Amazon, you know, for of us course. here in the U.S. Course. Amazon and uh, go to the Frontiers website. You know that that's always a good place. Um, but I really appreciate you, man. I I thank you for uh, for taking the time to chat with me. Um, I really wish you the best, Tony. I mean, I hope you guys do really well with this. Uh, and, and and I hope all the fans that are listening, get out there, Manic Sinners, King of the Badlands, grab a copy of that, listen to the videos, support these guys, because, I mean, that's what we're here for. We're all here to unite this uh, excellent music that's coming out, uh, support Frontiers and, and all the record labels that are doing this, man, because it's, it's such good stuff. You know, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate having you on here. And, and, and have any opportunity to talk about this album. I, I really think you're going to do well with it, Tony. Thank you. We can talk anytime you want. Anytime. I'll hit you up on, uh, on Facebook and we can, we can sure. chat. Maybe Great. set up an interview on the, uh, I do a, th this is talking to Fastlane. I do a podcast, uh, you know, during the week, cool. uh, usually Wednesdays and, you know, I like to bring artists on and maybe we can bring you on to discuss this and, you know, some of the other things that you're doing too. That'd be fantastic. Sure. We can talk about our record collection, our vinyls. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm always in for that. What was the thing? Oh, except balls to the wall. Yeah, I just uh, I interviewed yeah. Udo um, last year. I think it was November. In fact, Such so he's. I, I love it. Let's see what you else can do. A dream. See theater. if I can move here. Yeah. Them and smile. See dream theater. Keel. Keel. Yeah. Sure. The Racer X. Arm yeah. Say. Well, so I got my heads in a way. Dream Theater, David Lee Roth. Yeah, Dream Theater, yeah, 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 yeah. David Lee Roth. I um, even got the, the Spanish edition of Eat Him and Smile on vinyl. Now that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> it's hard to find, I, but I'm such a huge fan. I love David Lee Roth and his solo career. Van Halen, of course, too, but yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah the, the, the guy, uh, he's the one that really, um, you know, took that, Kind of like for the metal and hard rock scene, it took that, uh, you know, that front man to the next level. Of course, of course. Yeah. Nobody did it like him. I mean, no, never. Amazing. Never. There will never be a second debut rock. You know, it's a, it was pretty cool. I mean, I know we only got a couple, maybe I don't even have any time here, but but just finishing off, I got to see Dave with the, uh, the not the Eat Em and Smile tour. What was the, what was the album after that? I'm blanking on it. That's it. I saw him on a skyscraper tour with a Poison opening. The Poison was just coming out. That, that show was unbelievable. I mean, Dave coming across the, the audience on a surfboard. On a surfboard, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. really cool. But Tony... Uh, I, love, I, I love Skyscraper even more than Nita and Smile. That was a good album, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Just a fun album. I mean, you know, it's that's the way it should be. You just throw it in, you're entertained. But uh, uh, in finishing here, you know, I, I wish you the best. I really do. I'll hit you up outside here. We can set up an interview and, and uh, you know, meet some of the fans and, and let them, you know, get an introduction to you and, and what you're doing here, man, because I think it's fantastic. I, I wish you the best, and, and I thank you so much for sitting in with me here. Sure. You're welcome. It was a pleasure for me, too. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You have a good day now. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. King of the Badlands, Manic Centers. Get this, man. February 18th. And we'll be spreading the word to everybody. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.